a shoe I had no interest in buying until I ran into them in person. And of course, we're all sneakerheads, so you know how it went. Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today, we got a detailed look and review on these beautiful things right here. This, my friends, is the Air Jordan. Nope. Let me rephrase that. The Jordan AJKO Low. Although they call them now on the box label at least, AJKO One Low. There's only been one, so it's just the AJKO Low. So like I was saying, I really had no interest in buying a pair of these, mainly because there's so much stuff coming out that I have to grab just to review that something redundant like this, where we've done the highs, we've already done the lows, the union ones, what else is there to talk about? But I saw these on the shelf, or technically they weren't on the shelf, they were just sitting on, if you've never been to Phenom that's in our area, it used to be like an old sushi place, even though they're, they're gonna move, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. There's like a sign over in Doko now, so technically that's public knowledge, right? So yeah, they're gonna be moving. However, the spot that they're located at right now used to be a sushi spot. So their sneaker display, like like where you would normally walk into Foot Locker and all the shoes are on the shelves, for one, where they have that like on their main wall, it's a giant Japanese sun. And then it's got ninja stars all over the place with like fish hooks and they've got the shoes hooked and they're hanging there, which is awesome. And then when you go to the counter, the counter is still where the sushi boats were. And so they've got everything on sushi plates. They sometimes have the boats working, sometimes they don't. But essentially these were just sitting there and I was like, what the, and I grabbed them and I was like, man, it was the toe that sold me. I was like, these are hella clean. They look amazing. So yeah, I ended up grabbing a pair. They didn't have the black and gray ones, like the shadow looking colorways, which was unfortunate because that was the reason why I was like even interested in this shoe after getting the unions. I was like, I don't really need another one, but here we are in another day, another pair. What are you going to do? Three words for you. Treat. Yo, so. But with all that being said, the outsole is gorgeous. It's radial, it's simple. And this is actually not the Air Jordan 1 outsole. For those of you guys that don't know, the outsole and the midsole tooling is actually, if you remember, so the outsole itself is from the Nike Vandal. It's part of the old school Nike lineup. Nike had a whole bunch of different models back in the day throughout the 70s and the 80s. The first basketball shoe to feature Air was the Air Force One, it was 1982. Every shoe after that, they've always alternated. And I don't mean like one after the other where one's Air based and one's not. It's just that they've always had cheaper offerings, which is what the AJKO is compared to the Air Jordan 1. And the Nike Vandal was one of those shoes. It was a affordable option. It didn't have any tech in it. Therefore, it wasn't a Nike Nike Air branded shoe, but it is a Nike product. So yeah, I know that I've explained this before, but just in case you're new here, whenever you see a Nike or a Jordan product, the name of the shoe normally indicates what the shoe is offering. So when you look at the tongue label on these guys, and it literally just says Nike, it doesn't say Nike Air like the Air Jordan 1, it's because there's no Air in here. There is no tech. It's a low tech shoe. It's a budget offering if that's how you want to look at it. That's how it was back in the day. That's what AJKO stood for. It was Air Jordan knockoff. Tinker finally confirmed that which was appreciated. But yeah, basically this was a canvas, like cheaper upper, you know what I mean? Compared to the premium leathers that they used back in the day. And again, the cushioning is not in here like it was in the Air Jordan 1. So that was like their top tier shoe. Whereas the AJKO was their lower tier shoe. The Air Force One, top tier shoe. The Nike Vandal, not so much. So yeah, basically this is a rubber cup sole. It's not anything else. Uh, when you pull out the insole, you'll kind of be able to see like there's that stroll bullets in there and there's usually like die cut marks. There's one in the forefoot and one in the heel. It's to line everything up while they're getting it all ready to stitch along the upper. But when you look at that, try to get it in B-roll. I don't think it's gonna be like visible, but when they're in hand, when you look through the little hole there, you can literally see that it's hollow because it's a- uh, the, the, the grid? Yeah, the cup sole. So that's what it looks like inside of cup soles like this, where it's it's like a hollowed out shoe. It's really interesting. It's to allow for the rubber to compress a little bit so they're not completely dead weight like underneath your feet, but it's definitely not an EVA or an air unit or a zoom unit and all that stuff or an ortholite, you know what I mean? Polyurethane, whatever. Speaking of polyurethane, this is the insole. It's real polyurethane. So this guy right here is hella thick. It's nicely sculpted and molded and everything. It's beautiful. It is super comfortable, especially the more that you wear them. So something like this might be a little bit stiff at first just cause it's a little dense. Polyurethane naturally is more dense than an EVA. But once you start wearing it, you start to break in that foam and everything thing and man let me tell you these are some of my favorite insoles that Jordan puts in its products you will only find them in the AJKO's in the Air Jordan 1 85 cuts I almost called them the OG highs I wish that these were in the OG highs <sighs> 
And then you also find these in the Airship PEs as well. All three shoes, fantastic models. So even though the cup sole is hollowed out and everything, that polyurethane insole really comes in and saves the day. I think that it's awesome. Uh, I wish that I could like buy these separately and put them in my other shoes. Although you can do that. You can get the move insoles. The move insoles, the casual all days, those are like way bouncier than these. It is a polyurethane base. But if you go to that video, you'll see that the forefoot and the heel is like carved out and everything. So it adds for a lot of bouncy compression. So it's basically broken in for you already. And then there's an arch plate in there. Too. Now the upper on these guys is just like almost every other AJKO with the exception of that other union shoe, the one that we actually did review where it was a mixture between canvas and leather. This one is just canvas. It's beautiful, man. Like these remind me of like a low top airship, like the color blocking and stuff. So like how the airship is kind of plain in the back and then it's got the high white collar and then there's the color up at the top. That's what this reminds me of, but just down low, it kind of looks a little better. Like it looks a little cleaner, like it flows better and stuff. Even though I absolutely love the airship, I think that that's one of the most underrated and slept on shoes, but not by our choice. It's because the brand won't release the damn things so that we can actually get them. They're at tier zero accounts. It's, it's such bullshit. The only leather panel would be the swoosh and the back tab. Those are both synthetic though. So if you are a vegan sneakerhead and that's something that is like important to you and everything, you don't want to wear animal products. This is the shoe for you. You can get away with wearing a Jordan one look without wearing animal skin or hide or whatever you want to call it. You win. Perfect. They do have the vintage effect on here just on the midsole. It's very light though. So it doesn't bother me whatsoever. They do come with extra laces as well. That wasn't quite the same color as the white canvas. So that threw me off a little bit. Initially, I was just going to keep them with the blue laces in. But once I put the, I don't know what to call this color. Does it look white to you? Or it it's kind of dingy. A little bit. Yeah. It looks vintagey. Yes. And once I put these in, I was just like, they look great with both laces. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just keep them like this, like I do with my Jordan ones, because it's easier that way. And then the heel tab, instead of saying Air Jordan, like the low top versions of say the Air Jordan 1 Lowe's or the Air Jordan 1 Low OG, two different models. I'm trying to teach you guys it's so hard when there's so many weird shoes out there. But anyways, it says AJKO on there, uh, heavily stitched or embroidered, very similar to what we see on the Travis Scott collaborations of the Air Jordan 1 Low OG. I don't know if I like that. It looks a little messy. I concur. Now for 120 bucks, are they exactly worth what you're actually getting? Honestly, no. Much like the Jordan Stadium 90s or whatever, that kind of felt like a $90 shoe. And that actually had their tech in it. And it had actual raw materials on there, like suede and really cheap ass leather. So if that would have been normally like what I would consider a $90 shoe, this right here should be about 65, 70 tops. Instead, they're 120, still cheaper than a Jordan 1, or at least a high top one. I don't think that they're cheaper than the Jordan 1 lows. I don't know. I can't remember what they even price those at anymore. They used to be 110. I don't know what they are now. But yeah, this is not exactly a quality shoe or anything like that as far as like materials and tech and everything like that. However, if you don't like all of those really random looking Air Jordan 1 lows that are on shelves and just kind of sit there, it just feels like they're printing money or trying to anyways. This right here at least has a little bit of heritage towards it. It's an original style colorway. This is a Kentucky blue, which was an original colorway of the Air Jordan 1 back in 85. They did re-release, but it was pre Air Jordan 1 hype. And so they eventually went to clearance and now you can't get them for a decent price. Like those things are mad expensive. So this might be the only option for you right now. But either way, I think that these look fantastic. If you're interested in a pair, they do fit true to size. So whatever you typically wear, that's exactly what I would order. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. Let us know what you think about these. Again, this is the AJKO1 Low or AJKO Low or Jordan AJKO Low. There's so many weird variations, <sighs> man. But with all that being said, thank you once again for being here. Let us know what you think about these. Did you get a pair? Did you not? Did you actually get the shadows? How do they look? Are they as good as they look online? Please tell me that they're not. That way I don't feel like I missed out on something. But with all that being said, we will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, have a good one.